A safe and wonderful morning, dear grade 9 learners. I am Ma Marie, and let me guide you in a meaningful learning engagement. This is Valenzuela Live, Mapi 9. Do not forget to prepare your pen and paper so you can write down important details. And please be reminded of the following netiquette. Rules to observe during the live streaming class. Respect everyone. Be polite to everyone, especially when giving comment. No hate speech. Do not express hate or violence to someone during live streaming. Observe the anti-cyberbullying law. Any kind of bullying is not allowed. No promotion of products or items. Selling of products, self-promotion, and unrelated link are not allowed. The live streaming is intended for learning only and not for business purposes. So, are you ready learners? If yes, Kindly hit that heart reaction button. All right. Thank you, learners. Let's now start. For today, we will be focusing on this most essential learning competencies. Analyze the risk factors related to intentional injuries. And these are our specific learning objectives. Identify protective factors related to intentional injuries. Demonstrate ways to prevent and control intentional injuries. In our previous discussion, we have learned that intentional injuries or injuries resulting from violence. Let us now check how much you remember about its general types. Here is your first task. Identify the type of intentional injury. Comment S if it is self-inflicted injury and key in A if it is an assault. Here's number one. Suicide. If you answered S, you're correct. Number two, sexual abuse. If you answered A, you're definitely right. Number three, extortion. If you answered A, you're doing good. Number four, para suicide. If you answered S, you're awesome. And last, number five, terrorism. If you answered A, good job! Did you get all correct answers, dear learners? Very good! Remember that self-inflicted injuries are type of intentional injury that is caused by a person to himself purposely such as suicide and parasuicide. On the other hand, assault is a type of intentional injury that caused by another person on purpose. Examples of this are sexual abuse, extortion, and terrorism. Other related factors to intentional injuries are domestic violence, which aside from sexual abuse, 
also includes physical assault and verbal abuse, bullying, kidnapping, abduction, homicide, or the uh, purposeful killing of a person. No one is safe from intentional injuries and from the factors related to it. The best we can do is to learn and practice protective factors to prevent or control intentional injuries. Protective factors are positive influences that can improve the lives of individual or the safety of a community. And here are some examples of preventive and protective factors you can follow in order to avoid intentional injuries. Number one, community or societal protective factors. Community norms of shared responsibility for supporting parents and families. Implementation of evidence-based practices. Access to basic needs and specialized services. Number two, relational protective factors. Relationships with peers and reduced feelings of isolation. Positive relationships within the extended family. Ability to communicate emotions effectively. Engagement in social institutions. Secure parent-child relationships. Number three, individual protective factors. Stress management. Access to concrete support. Hopefulness. Problem-solving skills. Resilience. Parenting skills. This may decrease the likelihood that individuals engage in crime or become victims. Building on existing protective factors makes individuals and communities stronger and better able to counteract risk factors related to intentional injury. Now, let's have your second task. Hit the heart emoji if the statement expresses a protective factors to avoid intentional injuries and comment a sad emoji if it does not. Number 1. The city government of Valenzuela launched West Olympics, an inter-barangay sports competition for the youth. If you answer the heart emoji, you're correct. Number 2. Vice Mayor Lori Natividad Borja spearheaded the Nanay Tatay Teacher Program in collaboration with the school's division of Valenzuela to build a strong relationship and collaboration between the parents and the school towards the welfare of students. If you key in a heart emoji, you are doing good. Number 3. Margaret's parents do not allow her to join in any activities in school. If answered a sad emoji, you're definitely right. Number 4. Trisha is an active choir member of their church. If you answer the heart emoji, you're fantastic! And here's number 5. Mapulang Lupa National High School Project Watch conducted a seminar about mental health awareness for their students. If you key an heart emoji, you got it right. 
Good job, dear grade 9 learners! Here's two thumbs up for your active participation. May you leave the protective factors to avoid intentional injuries that we have discussed. But always keep in mind that danger may just be around the corner. So watch your surroundings and the people around you closely. Be alert, be mindful, and be active. And that the ends our learning engagement for today. Thank you for joining me. Again, I am Ma'am Rosemary Elfostanes, and this has been Valenzuela Live, Math 9.